the Philippines. Oh. It's very simple. The Larsky, go to the front, don't die. What about the Koopa? They're going to push. Yes, and she's going to push. And in case if they get damaged a little bit, hey, you know, you have the Rafaela. You're going to heal back. Such an easy draft to execute from the side of Mali Philippines when you compare it to RGSG. But honestly, the Popo and Koopa, I love it from Onyx PH, man. Oh, yeah. This pick, you have the Beatrix already banned away. You pick up a Clint. What's the answer to the Clint? It's either the Brody or the Popo and Koopa. Brody, sure, you can just wait it out, just play the waves, not get any pressure at all until you hit level four. But with Popo, you can get it from the get go. Not to even mention the Amon. We don't know where either is going because we've seen Onyx PH do this before. They played a mid Popol and Koopa, they played a mid Amon, so it's not an easy go for Baby Cakes. He's getting Num Num. He's getting Num Num. What's no. up with you, Leo, and the baby are you, thing? Are, are, the are you hungry? I mean, like, oh man. Maybe. 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 M3, maybe. M3, M3, maybe. Maybe. Right now, as we're going to go through the tunnel, let's take a look one more time at the rosters, at the heroes that they picked up. From this, I want to get some early predictions on the draft. Leo, let's start with you. Onik or RSG? I'm like an Onik. I just need to see as well where these heroes are going. But already, when it comes down to execution, so much simpler. Yeah, I'm I'm honestly on the same train over here. It's Onik time. Onik is looking so strong. They've been so clean. And having this kind of draft, oh. it's kind of difficult for them to be taken down. It's going to be a unanimous decision for Onik PH draft. But we will have to see the execution from both of the teams. Will they be able to use this win condition, RSG, to come back and make it a 1-1 one -one game? We are getting ready for the game. And instantly, it is not time yet to get into the game. We have a little bit more time to talk about the drafts. Okay, so there is a, a few things we can pick up on uh, given that lineup. It's going to be Marky on the Popolin Koopa. So that means Hatred is on the Amon in mid. I kind of like that more. Yeah, I like same. that it's the Amon in mid because he can rotate so fast. He can put up such uh, a threat anywhere he is on the map. Hell, even LY4 on the Balmond, unless he doesn't get the, the killing spree triggers, Hatred can get a free kill out of nowhere. Like, especially if... Uh, the side laners pick up on it. So yeah, um, this is great. All the more, I'm going to say Onyx PH. Yeah, this is also giving them a snowball opportunity where when the Amon already has a level 4, even though not the most bursty hero at level 4, but the way that they can play these lanes, it can be a situation where you take one lane, and the thing is, if one of the side laners die, especially if it's on the Popol and Koopa lane, then the towers is going to get, get get broken down very, very easily. And that kind of situation, if you break the first tower, even like, say, the first three minutes, four minutes, then it's going to be a situation where RSG will have a difficult time to actually find the farm to scale back into the game. And it just becomes a situation where Onik. Even though they're playing Mobile Legends, they're also playing chess and checkers and other smart games where they just control everything. I like how you ran out of it. You're just like, other smart games? Yep, they're, they're playing other cerebral just yeah. uh, I'm not. Contests. I'm not Onyx. Yeah. I'm LaPel. I can stop whenever I feel like it. <laughs> they can. They have to keep going. It's on, Because it's Onyx time, Because right? it's Onyx time, yeah. No, but, but for, for When real, is it RSG time? When it's RSG time is when they understand that they cannot give the map over to Onik. They really have to understand that because the moment you let Onik have the map, you're kind of disrespecting them. A lot of it rides on, again, the way you put it, LaFell, the first three to five minutes. Turrets are going to be prime objectives for Onik. There are targets on him everywhere. But the thing is, RSG's window is literally from level one to four. Once Onik, all of them hit level four, it's going to change the tide of battle. The timing is just going to be so different until we hit late, late, late game. And then it becomes a, a crapshoot from there. It's literally just who can pull the trigger faster, who's going to make the, the wrong mistakes at the right time, if that makes any sense. So yeah, just like in game one, early lead. That's just, that's essentially, that's essentially how Sana plays on the Selena. Yeah, and the difference is, is right now, it is Onyx time to actually put on the pressure. Because this time, in terms of the draft, they are the one that that can execute the early aggression, but they don't really have to just because they have a lot of options. And RG, they do not have a lot of options. It's, it's tough when you're playing a draft where you're hoping 
your enemy does something instead of you trying to execute one or two things. Yeah, I agree. Again, LY4 and RSG, their composition is like you need to get ahead in the early stage, right? With the Balaman, you want to get those early objectives, those neutral objectives. With the Selena, you want to get those kills. And the thing is, you need to. Because like you said, Onyx Draft is multi-dimensional. They can play multiple styles right now. They can go for the early game, sure, but even if they falter in the early game, they still have that mid, they still have that late with Uranus coming in as well and the Yusun Shin. Now you mentioned uh, the whole Delarski Express, the train with no brakes. What is RSG to do there? They have the Cho, they have the Selena. I'm guessing it's a 50-50 when it comes to laning into Yu Zhong. I mean, it, it becomes a situation where the Bellman can be very, very good because Bellman and Uranus almost plays kind of the same way. If Bellman is ahead, you can't kill him. If Uranus is ahead, you can't kill him. In the early stages of the game, when both of these heroes don't really have much, then it's kind of equal ground. I want to see what kind of uh, battle spell Dalarski has. If it's still the Flicker, then he may be biting off more than he could chew. I'm, I'm hoping it's on the Purify this time around. They just went really floored it, game number one. That's why you know, he can afford the flicker. But this time, uh, in the face of the Cho specifically, you want to purify. I hope Dilar picked up on that. I very much agree on that. You know, the purify is going to help him get out of these crazy situations, especially that single target lockdown that RSG has. But let's see, the players are already getting ready. We are going to get into the game very, very soon as there is a game remake. But again, for both of these teams, we have seen Onyx Philippines just split the map really, really well. What does RSG need to do in that situation? Do they need to just, you know, face them when, when you know, Onyx Philippines goes bot, we go bot, or do they want to trade? That is the question. That's what, what makes it so hard for them to respond to these plays. But it is not time just yet because we are going to get Welcome another pause for a Legends. second. Yes, Lofel, that question. Yeah, so this is the thing about the side of RSG. I talked about this before where every single team, they have a difference in their early game time, their mid game time, as well as their late game time. For the side of RSG, they need to get to the mid lane a little bit earlier compared to, to the side of Onyx Philippines. And what they have to do is they have to group up much, much faster. Almost playing at an RRQ kind of pace where, sure, during the laning stage, play your laning stage. But get to that, to that power spike way, way faster and then using the advantage and forcing the fights because they have to push Onyx out of their comfort. Because, like I said, going out against, against Onyx, I've said this over and over again just because of how important it is. If you give the map open big, especially since they do have the Yeast and Shin, it's going to be very difficult for the side of uh, RSG to really win back the game. They have to push their advantages. They do. They really do need to push their, uh, their advantages. And the thing is, right now, there is another technical pause, all right? So this is giving them a lot of time to actually talk about this as well. The win conditions from both of the teams, this is going to be very, very aggressive, very, very crazy from the start for RSG and Onyx Philippines. What they need to do is to weather out the storm. Yeah, again, that level one to four are gonna be key for Onyx to survive. And then they're in the driver's seat. Into the land of Don we go. It is confirmed to be a uh, mid lane show. I'm wondering who has the roam items here. It's got to be uh, Sana at this point. I mean, it could be the both of them. This is the thing that RSG, they do like to do. They want to play double roam. It is kind of okay when you have both of them on, but it makes the game a little bit slower just because you're going to have your items as well as your level a little bit later. Yeah, and there you go. Already Hatred playing very, very aggressively into that mid lane, taking Wolvesy to half HP, but it is going to be LY4 with that early aggression, with the initiation to get that little Wanderer. As Onyx Philippines, they are just going to go for the normal path onto the Eastern Shin. Doesn't really want to go for anything too crazy just yet. Here you see the difference already, uh, the little adjustments that even Onyx PH has done. Poloisi is not going over to LY4 anymore. So he understands that the tempo has changed. He understands that this is their window. One to four. If we play it right between here and then, it'll be all right. And up top, wow, I'm so impressed. Dilarski is actually winning against Diablo. 
Yeah, but right now, we have to look at the gold lane because we do see that both these teams, they understand that this is the lane that they have to watch. The Larsky going up against the Diablo. Let's put them on the island. This is a 1v1. Let's respect the big boys over here and try to see who is actually going to win in the, in the lower stage of the, game, uh, of the map. And we can see that Yeast and Shin is already passing down there. Yeah, but you can see the pressure already, man. The, just the, the dominance that has just been asserted by Marky alone. Now with Yi and Shin also in the bottom side, it's going to make it really hard for this clan to do anything. Maybe even a dive coming in here is on it. Philip PG just take half of that turret gold away before the turtle even spawns. Right now looking at the turtle RSG, they are... I, I would say they should oh. force this out. They got the first blood. LY4 1v1 against Beloisky over there. But right now, will he continue this? Loisy is there. Yeah, the, he already, he actually didn't use that lethal counter to get the kill. So it's actually very possible for this to keep on going. Larsky, he needs to be careful. Loisy has the way the dragon will not choose to use it just yet. He is just going to be able to zone Larsky away. And that is going to be the turtle taken away. But he can look at him. Damage goes in for more and picks up the kill once again. LY4 trying to run away now. He's going to be taken down as well by Kyrie, who joins in the fight. Diablo, he's jumping in. He's trying to look for a trade and he'll get it. It's a two for one for Onyx PH. Nasty. Mountain Shocker kill aside, you gotta respect that aim on. And yes, at this point, Hatred, he doesn't have his sustain just yet. But wait till he does. Wait till he starts rotating and starts taking down Baby Cakes. So far, one thing we can say about Baby Cakes is he's holding his own against his Popolin Koopa down bottom against Marky, who you must note is using Weapon Mastery. He's looking to build those items to even more be a threat to RSGSG's objectives. And I guess that's why they're babysitting. Baloisi, they sent him over there. They understood and they smelt that maybe Lolzi, maybe Sana, they might be looking for a kill here. And they're looking to let Marky ramp up. Yeah, right now looking at the items, Kyrie Dirk, he's going for that War Axe a, li a little bit earlier over here. And once he completes that, I feel like that is the sign to go. That's the sign that, okay, Amon, you can burst out anyone. Right now, Marky over here as well. I, I would suggest that he has a lot of damage. They can go much more aggressive right now from the side of all, uh, Onyx Philippines. Yeah, but the thing is, do they want to be that aggressive, right? It is a 1,000 gold lead already built oh. from no kills, and there you have it once again. Wait a minute, there's going to be Sana going for the Mr. Arrow. Holy Baptism gets him out of there, and that is why that Rafaela just does so much. And in the midst of it all, it's going to be Marky picking up the turret, flickering away, and the beautiful level macro. But wait a minute, it's going to be RSG collapsing onto the bottom oh. side, and Marky will be the victim of that engage. Yeah, that is exactly what they have to do. Even if they have to burn their spells, just go for it. You have to push on this lead, control the map. But still, on the Philippines, they're doing good and then engage. Too much, too slain. much that Lozi committed underneath the turret. There's still a shield here. And now Hatred, just like that first oh, fight oh. in mid that extended into the jungle, they're going to take down Baby Cakes here. There's too much burst on this Amon. Oh, oh, wait a minute. It's actually going to be Baby Cakes. Uh -huh. there, you yep, there you go. There's the ultimate coming in to finish him off. But yeah, just that was food. Well, just playing with his food, agree, but the cakes. The, the cakes. cakes. Playing with the cakes. Playing with the cakes, playing with his food, or whatever you want to say it right here. It was RSG making a misplay in the bottom side, and it is going to cost him a lot. With Honor Philippines taking the turtle and Larsky just Red being such a nuisance, but with the dragon, will be able to connect right now. It's going to be a lot of damage placed on the Larsky. The Furious Dive as well Red to chain it all down, and finally, played. he gets taken down. Okay. This is still early game. We're still playing in the first five minutes. Can't expect the Larsky, despite having the Purify. He chose not to use the Consecration, so he understood. Blue I Team must Tara say, though, why the Purify if he did not even commit fully to, to trying to stay alive? Uh, I guess it's just Onik having a little bit more leeway. They understand that they're in control. They pushed... Uh, two lanes already, top and bottom. And so far, RSGSG not able to get anything in return, but they're keeping the kill score close. This is very reminiscent of game one. Yeah, right now looking at RSG, they're moving as a unit, they're moving as a group, looking like they're, they're worried in case Hatred comes in, trying to burst anyone out. So it is a good idea, but I feel RSG, they really should set up somewhere around the turtle side because I feel with their composition, they can actually win a, a fight over there, but they just have to be careful of this Amon. Yeah, and there you go, the kill. Oh, Hatred jumps in, but it's actually going to be baited away, and that's oh, it. Oh my god. Lossi goes for the way the dragon, but Kyrie in a 1v3 jumps in and picks up another, a one for one that is worth it for RSG because Hatred has been getting a lot done, but Marky actually starting to lose these 1v1s up top. The key to taking down Marky is to compromise Koopa. 
uh, that's how he fell down bottom uh, underneath where eventually Onyx still got a trade. So yeah, that was a close victory for Baby Cakes, but he just did not have the confidence just yet to go ahead and be the aggressor, as he shouldn't, as he shouldn't. At this point, six minutes in, I think Baby Cakes should still play it safe. Baby Cakes should still try to ramp up, and then eventually when they have these 3v4, 4v4 fights, as long as he gets caught out, that's when they get their timer. But right now, big fight! Yeah, a big fight comes in. He's gonna leave the counter place already. Kyrie has nowhere to go, and he's gonna get taken down. Diablo, he gets out, and Marky, he needs to be careful. He can't go anywhere again. LY4 picking up the double and a turtle to put it on top. Diablo is playing beautifully right now. 2 0 and 2 on this U song. Not only can he initiate well, but he chooses the right targets. Right now, RSGSG, looking like with this use on pick, is, has been is destroyed. the way for them to win Blue the team fight. That was just really, really good for the side of RSGSG, man. They played it really well, and that is the reason that they have been able to come out on top in the group stage. They need to go for more of that. They need to push the pace. Yeah, right now, looking back into the replay, this is why I say Diablo is playing so well. Lolzi got caught over here. Diablo just goes inside, engages, and instantly goes black dragon form, hitting his skills onto multiple people, hitting that dragon tail, and getting the shards just to make sure that he stays alive. And in this kind of team fight, especially if Onifilby still want to try out that banana split, the Yuzong can definitely travel from, from basically all parts of the map. Yeah. yeah. He, he landed the Petrify on like three or four dudes. And it was beautiful. So yeah, that Yuzhong pick in the first phase in the draft, paying dividends for RSGSG so far. Now it's time for Onyx BH to recover. They've shrunk the gold lead. RSGSG are 400 away, but still, they're back on the banana split, about a thousand gold ahead, Onyx PH. They left Delarski, so maybe this is Delarski's window. Maybe they just bought time for the Delarski Express. But it's actually really good for the side of RSG Singapore, right? Whoa. They do have they do have the, the map split to a very good place for them. And now Lozi already trying to look for an opening in the team fight. But remember, Onyx, they can go for these crazy team fights as well. And LY4, he's caught off guard. He's gonna be baby kicks kiting them away, and Onyx can't go for any uh -oh. engage. One thing that their composition lacks is a reliable source of engage. They don't have anyone. They just go straight at them. So RSG, anytime they don't see a good fight, they can just back away. Whereas they can pull the trigger anytime they want as well. Look at Beloisky, just fearless. Face checking in the traps, using that first skill on the Rafaela to see if anyone's hiding in the bush. That's exactly how you play these moments. But yeah, almost mini heart attack moment where he got caught and then, whoa, even Lolzi thought about it. Should I come in with the dragon? You maybe not. Yeah, looking at this game right now, I'm actually happy to see LY4's progression where he used to be a marksman one-trick as well, but right now he has given up the carry position over to his own team, playing a more tanky kind of hero, more heavy in, in the front side, showing RSG they've really grown up and say, you know what, LY4, I, I'm the leader, I'm gonna go in front, I'm gonna trust you guys to do the damage, and right now RSG is looking much better compared to game one. The questions for game number one was that could, can they uh, fix the little mistakes that they made in the first game into game two? It's a very hard thing to ask for a team, especially considering that they only had a few minutes to go in. But oh my god, Lozzy goes over the way the dragon is game will connect onto Marky. He's gonna get shut down and boom, bada big. It's gonna be an all-out fight coming in with one on the board. It's gonna be another one picked up. Two for one for Kyrie. Jumps back and forth. He picks up a double and he's looking for more. Diablo keeps on jumping in, but Kyrie! Oh Oh my what? god, beautiful kiting as he looks for another kill. He dashes forward and Hatred picks it up. A five for two. Literally the equivalent of what Kyrie did was he slipped on a banana peel and turned it into a moonwalk and then just swaggered on through, resulting in a wipeout. I, I don't know how he dictated and how he predicted that LY4 would dash on through the wall, but he used it to his advantage, triggered the passive on the East and Shin, wiped out RSGSG with the help of Baloisky, and got a free Lord in 10 minutes, almost 11. That was masterfully played. Yeah, absolutely, Kyrie. He was like, yo, Blonsky, you controlled the first game. I want a little bit of my time on screen as well. What? Yeah, honestly, Kyrie played just like yesterday. You know, when, when he played with us. Anyways, oh right now, Onyx will be, oh, they're looking oh, so oh. good. They are, they're flashing their mechanical skills. And right now, RSGSG, 
I think even they were surprised. I think they have to take a seat back and like, okay, we got to restructure our plan. We need to reprioritize the heroes. If they can get onto Kyrie, that's great. But the question is, can you get onto Kyrie? Can you get onto Kyrie? That's the reason the Z Sun Shin is just so lethal. That first ability is unstoppable. You want to use anything. It, as long as he times it properly, there's no way you can cancel that. So look at this. Right now with a 6.7 thousand gold lead with the Lord also marching down the bottom side. Larsky doing what he can. This is not looking good for RSG as again, they don't have a lot of that high ground. Death it! Hatred! What was that? He just goes in and boom! Sana disappears out of the map. Onigar looking to go to match point and Thorsky will be leading the charge inside the base. Diablo trying to do what he can but he's gonna get taken down in the end. Onik are just ferocious. They are vicious but RSG they don't want to give it up. They're the host. They want to come oh. back but Onik just keeps on giving it to him. It's Onik time. It's Onik time. I mean five, I mean, a game to, a game till Onik time but yeah we're, we're, we're at 2-0. Yeah, when you watch the game, basically Ani controlled the entire time. As of right now, RSG looks like they're not getting a read on to Ani Philippines. It looks like they have not have a proper plan to actually initiate whatever they want to do. And right now, Ani not only winning the draft, winning the microplay, but also winning the microplay. Getting engaged on, I'm saying macro, micro, yes, yes, yes. Anyways, both, both, both. Macro, micro, Ani Philippines. Winning out that that last team fight, Kyrie is amazing. He is chocolate something.